There is power in the seductive properties of narrative, in the suspension of disbelief, the bodily knowledge that comes to pass when you find your arms wrapped around a person's throat, when the pressure of your arms rests across his body, applying no additional pressure besides its own weight, where the body is porous, and so you absorb that weight. It festers there before being drugged to the front of the memory the next time you hear the words excessive force over dinner conversation. And maybe you chime in this time. Maybe the conversation is different because you have acquired new language through the body or because you have consumed new images which complicate the pictures of prison you're used to consuming. And so it is not some fantastic choreography which seems strange anymore. It is the images of prison in the media which seem strange. And so this time you speak. My name is Sabo Lee Smith, this is Sean Leonardo, and this is Melanie Crean. Our project, Mirror Echo Tilt, is a collaboration with people who've been formerly incarcerated or otherwise affected by the criminal justice system. Through ongoing workshops, we translate personal narratives to performance so that participants might regain the agency necessary to tell their own stories. We film these actions in decommissioned institutional spaces like prisons and courthouses so that those spaces might be reclaimed in our collective psyche. Our intention is not just to represent a problem by surfacing narratives of mass imprisonment and cyclical incarceration. Our goal is ultimately to reframe existing narratives that define the criminal. We use performance to strip down stories to their emotional core that we convey through minimal gesture. We generally use performance without spoken language to create a space where new language around these subjects might emerge. We believe that only by breaking down myths of the criminal and the perceived necessity of the prison can we envision new social systems that exist outside our current structures of justice. Justice, criminal, thug. Media language used to describe black criminality 
and the same language utilized by George Zimmerman to sell the gun that he used to kill Trayvon Martin. This was language given to us to describe and define our perceptions of race and our life experiences. But we didn't choose this language. We didn't ask to be defined as thug. So in our work, we remove language so that we can see situations with different eyes, to see complexity, and to see something that more closely resembles truth. We use magical realism as an aesthetic to expose how a system of mass incarceration that we often take for granted as necessary and natural holds a strange and awful power over black, criminalized black bodies. And in that power, what is revealed is the sheer lack of humanity present. At stake is a demographic of people who are surveilled and policed as soon as they enter our prematurely named post-race society. This project is also about racial aggression and the accumulative stresses come to bear on a person's ability to speak, perform, and stay alive. A system of correction is socialized onto youth of color daily and within them a fear of existence perpetuated where the simple act of buying Skittles means navigating social constructions that the youth themselves have no agency to participate in. The project has several parts. Performative workshops, curricula that we make available online, films, and critical texts. What we need, contacts, uh, especially at the New York Economic uh, Development Corporation to give us access to unused buildings, um, or maybe a beer with the Clip Collective to access the same, the people that presented earlier from Philly. <laughs> Uh, a research residency, um, a publisher, and a presenting partner. Our project is Mirror, Echo, Tilt, and thank you. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> <laughs>